you'll find out at the end of this call a lot about um, what is involved in that and what we do and how we support missionary kids and how you can support missionary kids. Um, but one of the things that I really felt to do during our call was to bring in a missionary family, um, especially the Shrekheises, because they are what, well, the Shrekheise MKs, the <laughs> children, they're not children, so that's kind of weird to say, um, are what you call MK squared. So they have a parent that's a missionary kid and then a grandparent that's a missionary. So it's like in their blood. And it, you know what? That's actually pretty common too. Um, Sister Paula Richardson, who's on the call, is a missionary kid married to a missionary kid who, of course, had missionary kids. So um, and actually, her husband's dad is a missionary kid. So Chris Richardson's dad is also a missionary kid. It goes back that far. So, so brother Jerry Richardson, he's one of us. Um, <laughs> that just makes us sound like really old or something like prehistoric. I don't know. <laughs> You're not. You're definitely not. You've traveled around the world long enough. You've got a good year. You gained a year. Too. Uh, okay. Well, 2020 feels like we've just all gained about 10 years. So uh, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, I wanted them to be able to talk to us. I was blessed to be able to be in the Dominican Republic with them um, last year. I can't believe that was last year. It feels like such a long time ago on an AYC trip. And um, just if you know their kids who are missionary kids, you know them, you love them. They have very sweet spirits and they're very involved in, in ministry and what's going on there in the Dominican Republic and uh, as adults, wherever they are, they try to plug into ministry. And I appreciate that. And I know that a lot of people who maybe feel a call to global missions, maybe there's that question, well, what about my family? Do I need to wait till my kids are grown? Um, you know, how can we, how can we, uh, you know, help our kids that are missionary kids. So I figured, you know what, let's talk to somebody who's done it and who has successfully raised kids that are now in ministry. And we are, we're very blessed because Emily's there with them. And um, I hope it's okay for me to say this. Daniel yeah, is actually yes. there too, but we're going to pray for him at the end because he has really been in a battle lately for his health. And um, so we're going to, we're going to have prayer for him before we leave tonight, but we want to hear from them. And I just want them to go ahead and start off with giving us a little bit of a, you know, a life explanation, if that's okay, where they're at and where they're from. And all that stuff. So take sister, it away. Sister Mandy, thank you so much. Uh, wanted to, um, an interesting fact that kind of is interesting to maybe to other people. So my mom and my mom and dad were missionaries, but actually my, my grandparents, my mom's mom and dad, back in the 50s, went to Alaska as missionaries before, that was like when it was the frontier. So in a sense, I know that was kind of a foreign field at that, at that point. Uh, it was actually my grandparents, my parents, us, and now our kids. Was that to the fourth power? <laughs> but anyway, thank you for, um, for allowing us to be involved in this uh, this time, this interview. We appreciate Sister Mandy. Uh, we enjoyed having them when they came to the Dominican Republic last year. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you a little background as far as my life is concerned. I was, I was born in the United States, uh, but at the age of four or five, my mom and dad were appointed to Honduras as missionaries and uh, I would like to say that I had no, um, I had no choice in the matter. I didn't have a, I had not have a choice to decide whether I wanted to be an MK or not. It was just kind of my lot in life, and that's the way it is. But you know, as young kids, I was, you know, at that time I was really young. Um, I don't remember having any kind of thoughts about, well, you know, what's it going to be like to go to the mission field. I, I don't even remember that because I was so young. Uh, so we, we went to Costa Rica and my mom and dad learned lang the language there, learned Spanish. And uh, I learned Spanish 
playing with my little friends in our neighborhood on the street playing soccer with them. So that was, uh, I really don't remember uh, just pretty much, I remember just kind of repeating what they said. And then before I knew it, I was, I was speaking Spanish and thank the Lord. Uh, later, I was able to take it formally in school. And it's been a tremendous blessing to have uh, another language to fall back on, uh, to be able to be complete, completely literate, speak and write, and uh, be able to read in Spanish. It's been a tremendous blessing to me as, as personally as far as ministry is concerned. Um, so we, we served two terms as missionaries in Honduras. And then um, my mom and dad decided, felt it led to the Lord to go back to the States. And that was really tough for me because I had put down roots, had my friends, I was going to school, and all of a sudden we're yanked out. It, it felt that way, we were yanked out from our environment and came back to the States. And then in two years, I was in two different schools in the States. I had to start all over again. And I really got, I got bitter with the Lord. I got bitter towards my family because I felt like, you know, my world had been turned upside down. And so I, <clears throat> I tried to run as far as I could. I didn't want anything to do with Spanish. I didn't want anything to do with missions. And I ran from my calling. I really ran from what I, you know, the Lord wanted me to do all along. But after I kind of got myself turned around, the Lord called me, formally called me to the mission, to ministry. And then I went to Bible school, met my wife, and uh, we were married. And then we went back to the mission field. The Lord began to deal with me in Bible school about uh, Spanish ministry again. And I'm so thankful that he did. Thank the Lord that he's so patient with us. To, <laughs> you know, we sometimes we make decisions and we think we're going to do a certain thing, but God has his master plan and he knows exactly what he wants us to do. And so we served on the AIM program. We were in Honduras, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and actually went into Cuba for a week. We had a great, that was a great experience. My wife and I will never forget that uh, going into Cuba. I uh, love Cuba. It was a wonderful place to be. And so, uh, then we were appointed as missionaries, served in Honduras for about 20 years. And then the Lord changed our direction. And today we are in Santiago. This is our house. We're in Santiago de los 30 Caballeros in the Dominican Republic, the northern part of the island, working on the northern part of the work here, uh, having a great time, enjoying what God is doing. We've uh, started a new church here in our city. And thank the Lord, we are now, we have a, a building. We're actually in the biggest mall in our city. And so we're very accessible to public transportation. We believe God's going to give us a tremendous harvest of souls right yeah. here. Uh, but that is an MK, uh, having been raised basically all my life on the field and now uh, given back to the kingdom of God. And I, I believe that. Being an MK really prepared me for ministry, prepared me for what was ahead in so many ways, so many ways, uh, knowing the culture, knowing the language, uh, just loving the people, being loving and being around the people. So I think I thank God. I, I would not trade my experience, my life experience on the mission field with anybody. I would not trade with anybody. I, I think it's the greatest experience I've had then to have our kids um, on the mission field. I mean, they actually have, they were born on the mission field. I wasn't even born on the mission field. They were, they were born on the mission field. And so that's a pretty cool thing. But uh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share just a little bit of my life. And it's been a blessing to be an MK. And we're still MKs, amen. A shout out to all the MKs, young and Woo! not so young. <laughs> amen. Like a hand gesture or something, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm <was an> MK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think we're gangsters or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Shrek Heis, do you have any history you want to share with us so we know where you're coming from? Uh, I was... I was raised in a pastor's home, home missions. So I've got done home missions 
through my youth. And then uh, I met my husband and I was on the mission field on AIM at 19, <laughs> um, two weeks after I got married. Uh, that I, he said, you know, that he was yanked up and he felt like he was taken. I know God took him back there for me. That was just <laughs> in the plan of God. <laughs> and, uh, You're good. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And so uh, I think home missions prepared me for foreign missions, definitely. I was in an international military city and uh, an, an international church. And went on AIM at 19, and that's when the adventure began. <laughs> I can share more about that in just a bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I was born in Honduras, Central America, and I'm fluent in Spanish, and I left Honduras around, I was 14 years old, and now we are currently living in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Awesome. So, and you're a missionary kid, and you can never yes. deny it. <laughs> That's right. I'm surrounded by them. You are. You are surrounded. <laughs> so, so, as parents of missionary kids, what worries, what things did you face? I mean, you were already on the mission field when you started having children, obviously. Um, but obvi there had to be certain things that made you nervous about that or made you wonder, how's this going to work? Or should we go back home? Or, you know. Well, I, like I said, when we first came, uh, we didn't have any children. And it was completely new for me. I was totally sold out to it, but I wanted to. Um, learn the language, get involved. So it was a few years uh, later that we had children. And uh, obviously my first fear literally was <laughs> having the baby on the mission field. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, it's amazing how God works that out. And when I think about not really fears, but at times they are but concerns. There were many of them. That being one, was incredible how the Lord took care of that because the Lord used someone at the American Embassy to help me because I had no connections there. My in-laws were no longer missionaries there on the field. And God moves the pieces and puts everything together. And this doctor was a high-risk doctor. And I thought, oh, I don't need a high-risk doctor. Why do I? But I'll go to her because she was recommended to me through someone Little did I know that I would have an emergency C-section and then Emily was a preemie, so I definitely needed her, but God knew that. And yeah. when I think about concerns, each one that comes to mind, it's just so amazing to see that God always, shouldn't be amazed, he always knows those things and he always takes care of them. Yeah. And as Brother Howe was preaching tonight and saying, who cares? I was thinking, you know what? Uh, he cares about our kids on the mission field and we care about others we care about them but we sometimes can get so concerned and not remember he cares and one of the other areas was in schooling and my kids started out in a private school Daniel did our son and during that time we ended up having a lot of political upheaval and our president um, was impeached and Daniel was caught several times in uh, riots and actually the school called me and said uh, do you know anyone in this neighborhood that he can go and stay with tonight because we can't get to you and uh, just different things happened so I ended up shifting to homeschooling and I think that scared me more than the riots because I didn't want to work my kids and I didn't want to um, do it. <laughs> and I didn't want to, um, thank you. I didn't want to, uh, it was such a responsibility to have their education in my hands. And yeah. once again, God moved us a few months before I began to homeschool them to a, a, a street, excuse me, where there were 14 other kids being homeschooled that didn't even exist really in Honduras at that mm -hmm. time. But God knew, he moved me there across the street from a teacher. Once again, a care or a concern I had, God was putting the pieces together. Mm -hmm. And my kids grew up in that. It's not something that every missionary does. There's different things. I know there's missionaries right here online that I did other things. I just wanna say that if you're concerned about schooling, God will take care of it. 
if you will step out in faith and obey and care about others, he knows you care about your kids. He will begin to make a way. And even sometimes that way, way will shift because I didn't plan to homeschool. Now I'm so grateful I was able to. But if you're yeah. not homeschooling and they're in a private school or whatever, God will put those pieces together. Yeah. Another fear I had was staying connected with family. How would they feel a part of their family in the States? And thankfully, in their early childhood, we didn't even, I, so we got an, we got internet when Daniel was little. I told you how old we are. Um, <laughs> but uh, things have changed, you know, and years two, it was $2.50 a minute for a call. And so you talked once a month and that was it. But God has, you know, allowed technology and, and everything to develop. And that's been a blessing. And you're able to keep your kids connected with their family in the States. And I think one other one that comes to mind is obviously safety, which I can touch on later, but also preparing them to return to the States, what type of um, preparation they would need for the States. And I think um, my kids would probably say that they're, they, one of the biggest uh, challenges for them is actually relating to the States because that is kind of a foreign country to them since they were not born there. And uh, I remember the awareness because I was not an MK and we went back to the States for deputation. And our son wa walked up to a water fountain when he was very young and he just stood there and I said, do you want a drink? And he said, yes. I said, well, you can have a drink. And he just looked at me and I realized he had never seen a water fountain before. And that was eye opening to me because I realized I'm going to have to prepare them for so many things. And, you know, prepare them because in the country we live in, you can't pump gas. It's illegal. And so those type of things. But all the way through, God always gave me uh, veteran missionaries at that time because I was a younger missionary that gave me wet words of wisdom. And he moved those pieces and put those together. So that was a fear. How are they going to fit back into the United States and to that culture? And that was a continual um labor of love i think as a mother what i learned from other missionaries that have were older than me at that point was you know make sure they still have a connection to that culture make your home a refuge make your home because my kids are third culture kids my husband is a third culture person they're they're a combination a wonderful interesting exciting combination right. but i made sure that we were connected to the culture we were living in so the 24th of December was Honduran Christmas and the 25th was American Christmas yeah. and they were totally different, but I wanted them to be connected, to relate to both places, right. to never live segregated or separated. And I feel like that gave them so much, a different viewpoint of the world and a fuller life. And um, if you have fears and, and concerns, that's natural, but just know that it, God will make a way. He will move those pieces for you. He's already got it planned out. He already knew. Yeah. He already knows those needs. Yeah, definitely. And um, just, and I think that's one of the beauties of, if I'm not mistaken, you have kind of been with the transition of MK Ministries. Like when your kids were really small, it wasn't as, mm -hmm. as right. heavy on yeah. activities as it is now. So you Non-existent. Non-existent when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> but thank yeah. God for it now. <laughs> and now we can see the difference between you and Noam Teasa. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> we are informed. <laughs> hey, it really wasn't very much existent when I was a kid either. So that's okay. no, Sister no. Mandy, I, I wasn't gonna. Well, I was gonna say it, and I held back. But I was gonna say, if you're concerned about them being, you know crazy or don't worry they will be yeah. just let go and let god do it They're just gonna be crazy. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. Yeah, that's right that's right that's another term if you're not familiar with it uh third culture kids she said that that would be um we say mk but third culture kids is something that is that you'll hear in like people that are military families or expatriates and and mm -hmm. diplomats and stuff like that so um mm -hmm. I do want to just be thinking about if you have anything to add to this at the end, but I kind of want to hear, I know I've got a lot of missionary kids on here, parents, um, your schooling experiences. She mentioned that. I noticed that we have a lot 
there's quite a few people that I saw, um, families that are on here that maybe I know are looking towards missions as their future. Um, and so you might want to know what are some options. So maybe in a few minutes, uh, some of the missionary kids that are on here can share what they did for schooling so that you can hear all the different kind of options. Um, but I do want to get through some more of these questions. Um, you know, I kind of want to know how has, um, you know, in raising your kids and in some family crises and crises and other things, you know, have you been able to, what are some ways that you found support, you know, within the global missions family, but also within, you know, the North American church? Uh, how has, what has that looked like for you all? Um, and don't worry, we're going to make you like talk here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely say, um, that I'll, I'll just touch this lightly because I'm sure Emily will, but MK Ministries has absolutely uh, been a huge support. Local churches, different districts have been amazing support. Pastors that we know, churches that we don't know, saints that you know personally, saints that just have a heart for missions have been very supportive in prayer obviously in giving uh, youth on missions trips have impacted the young people that come and but also we're impacted mm -hmm. by those trips as well and our children and I think those trips have been an extremely big blessing to our children uh, I want to say too that you think of that support from the states which is so vital and so important but the national work actually is a huge support as well. I mean, they become your family. They, they, they love you. You know, it's, it's not all a victory, but there's so much, there's so much more positive, uh, so, a, so positive side to it and a support from the national work. And even though you're different to them too, you don't ever quite fit in either place. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, um, I Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, I'm not sure if this is the same question, if it's overlapping or not, but I do think that MK Ministries uh, was specifically very supportive during medical issues uh, to do with Emily, and I know she would like to share that. Okay. Well, Emily, yeah. why don't you go ahead and do that? Just talk about some experiences you had there as far as with MK Ministries and also some of those medical things that I know you went through. Yeah. Well, um, I'm superbly grateful for NK Ministries because they were really there for me in a hard time. About five or six years ago, I was very ill. Um, didn't know if I was going to make it, but I'm here and I'm a miracle. Amen. Um, but they contacted me, sent me packages and um, gifts, and I got visits uh, from Brother Hal, Sister Celinda, and it really, I just really appreciated it. And, I know that I'll forever cherish it and never forget it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So Have then, you had the opportunity to do any like MK uh, retreats or North American Youth Congress trips? Yes. Yeah. I've been to two MK retreats and yeah. two NARCs. Yeah. And awesome. they are, have been such a blessing for me. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, the MKs that are teenagers, there is a retreat. Well, any if from teenager on up, you can then be 100 if you want. Uh, we have an MK <laughs> on the off years of uh, North American Youth Congress. So we fly them in to do uh, al almost like a like a camp or a youth convention feel, if you're yeah. familiar with like district events. Um, and then there's on the North American Youth Congress years, Sheeps for Christ actually flies them in and then we do North American Youth Congress together as a youth group. And that really is, I mean, to say as a youth group, I think last year I was so impacted when we had a uh, one girl that was there for the first time as a missionary kid she had she's a missionary kid all her life but she has at this event for the first time and she was really nervous about coming and mm -hmm. when she got there we had all we'd done is like stood in the lobby for a few minutes and then got on the bus and she texts her mom i found my tribe i found my <laughs> um 
And so it is, it's just very interesting because she's sister Shrek. I said, you don't really fit here and you don't fit there. I was talking to a mother, um, a new AIM family uh, that is going to be where they're at for a year. And they've been there for a few months now. And she said, I didn't realize until I got here that missionaries, like they don't have, it's, it's like, this is our home, but it's not our home or, you know, but I think what really happens is you end up with a bunch of homes. Yeah, that's how exactly. I think of it because I, I mean, yeah, you know, anywhere I land in the continent of Africa is home. Yeah. <laughs> One place, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, Illinois is my home because that's where I live with my husband now. And then I lived in a few years in Kentucky and, you know, I have connections to all those places and yeah. it's, it's easy for me as somebody who transitions well, because you do when you're a missionary kid, you can kind of do that, um, to be like, oh yeah, that's home or that's home. I know people are confused all the time. Like, where is your home? But the funny <laughs> question you can ask a missionary kid is, now where are you from? <laughs> well, <laughs> how long do you have? What's to tell you? <laughs> right, let me get my world map one moment. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, let's see. So beyond that, and uh, brother and sister Shrek, you can help me out. I don't want to miss anything. Um, you know, can you testify to those things that Emily mentioned in those ways she got support? Like, what did that do for you all as her parents? And what, you know, how did that affect your home? Oh, absolutely. I was, um, it was, it was very inspirational to me. Back to me that they would, you know, take a, take time out of their busy schedule to come and visit us. We were in Texas at the time, and uh, we were, you know, frustrated because we, you know, didn't know how long we were going to be sitting there. We, we couldn't deputize yet. It was just a, it was a lot of things going on. And to have Sister Saloon would come by and and Brother Howe, and then we actually had some missionary friends that, that lived in the area that came by and visited as well. It was just um, Words can't describe how we felt, how it made us feel. We appreciate the, the support. It was, it was tremendous, tremendous. I would say that it also impacted me because it was a time of such uncertainty and Emily was um, unable to walk for 10 months and she was unable to go to service. So everything was online. And the way that they just spread the word for prayer and so many people that were praying and reaching out and those messages that came from MKs that knew about it, but also that MK ministry let other people know about it. And that connection, because she wasn't able to be connected with people physically, it was almost like a quarantine or a, you know, have to stay home order pre-COVID. And that was such a blessing. The networking that MK ministry did to keep her connected with people in that situation was, I think, one of the biggest blessings, spiritually yeah. and emotionally. Yeah. Also, I want to say that having them, the support that's given, because if you've given to what was She's for Christ and is now something, something else, else. <laughs> if you've given to that, <laughs> so you, you have... Um, you have made it possible for so many of the MKs in this generation to be at NAYC. And I can tell you, for me, you asked how it's impacted our life. Both of our kids, and they're, our son is 24, but they're still our kids. They have been, their lives have been so impacted by that. It's things that we would never be able to afford to do in like MK ministry, I mean, excuse me, school of missions, if you've given to that, then you have had an impact on their lives. And I can tell you, they come back changed. They come back blessed. They come back renewed. And I, I've seen such uh, visual uh, evidence in, in, in those meetings that what God has done for them. And if you've given to that, if you're on here and you, if you're a pastor or a saint that's done that, I want to say thank you. Keep doing it because when you do, yes. they're blessed, and then they come back and bless. And now she went to her first one, and and in the in the country we're in now, the Dominican Republic, they were not really aware of NYC. And when she came back, she said, "You have to connect. You have to go." We had literally people go 
and we've had people connecting online so it just keeps going yeah it affected your whole country yeah, yeah. that's awesome amen, amen. Well, before we move on, I am required to say that officially you're welcome to leave at any time, but unofficially, <laughs> we can keep talking. <laughs> so if you don't need to go, don't feel bad. If you do need to go, but you would like more information, please uh, in the chat, put your email address so that we can have that and I can email you some information. Um, but uh, we, we, I do kind of want to touch on a couple of things. Um, as far as I know, we have some funny questions, but I do want to see if you're a missionary kid on the call, because I can't see everybody and I'm not techie enough to know how to do that. <laughs> so if you're a missionary kid on the call, please um, either put in the chat your name and where you're from um, and where you are now, or if you're still there, or if you can talk or you're unmuted, go ahead and let us know because um, we'd love to see your faces too. Um, but anybody, anybody? Jason Lucas. Yay, still Hi. there. <laughs> Enjoying his lovely weather there in Tokyo. <laughs> Jason, is your brother in Texas? Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, he is the youth president of North Texas. I thought. I thought so. I think I've met him. Well, I know I've met him. So anyway, now I've met you. There's Aaron MK to Nigeria, now in the States. Gordon's there. Gordon Smoke, Tanzania and Alexandria. Paula Richardson, who has a book because it goes back generations and generations. <laughs> 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 I know there's more coming in. I see it. I see them coming. So that being said, while those come in, um, I'm going to tell you what I did for schooling. Um, I was in my school years in the country of Swaziland in the southern tip of Africa. It's not even Swaziland anymore. It's Eswatini. Don't get me started on the king that changed the name, but whatever. <laughs> uh, forever Swaziland to me. I went to an international school called Sifunzani, and it was a fantastic experience for me. Um, it was my elementary school years. Uh, I just remember my class looked like the whole world had come to class that day. I mean, it was just packed with different nationalities, and I, I loved that. So that was what we did for school. On deputation, I did um, a Becca. So, so that's what I did. So my maiden name is Carpenter. I know some people might have wondered what that is because that gives you who my parents were. So I am a carpenter. <laughs> Anybody else want, want to share their schooling? I want Paula to share theirs because it's very unique. Yeah, I was just going to chime in. Um, as an MK, I did mostly homeschooling. Um, but then when we had MKs, um, we homeschooled. We had a small international school here in Madagascar that our kids attended for a few years. But um, my husband, when he was an MK, for his high school years, he went to a boarding school in Kenya. Um, it's, he had done a, like three years of his high school was in um, Kenya. And so when our kids growing up, they grew up hearing about RVA, Rift Valley Academy, and we had visited the school several times, so it was very familiar to our kids. And when they started getting up seventh, eighth grade, um, we put them on the list to go to RVA and they were accepted. And so our daughter did all four years of her high school at Rift Valley, Rift Valley Academy. And then our son, he did three, I think it ended up being three of his four years of high school at RVA. And um, we didn't talk about it much because most people, when you say boarding school, they're like, how do you, you know, how can you <laughs> dare send your kids, your horrible parents who send your kids to RV, to a boarding school? So we didn't talk about it um, that much, but it was an amazing, amazing experience for our kids. Um, Rift Valley Academy is a special, special place. And um, it is, 
it's an amazing school and not all boarding schools may be that way. So I don't, I can't speak for other boarding schools, but it was, they were there for three months and then they would come home for four to six weeks and then go back and it was year round schooling. And so our experience was a little different, but it was an amazing experience for our kids. If you talk to our kids today, they will tell you um, that it was an amazing experience. Um, it, they, they really felt like it prepared them for um, going back to America and going to college. And um, our experience may be a little different as well because we are on an island. And so if you don't know what that means, that means we cannot drive and go anywhere. Um, <laughs> and so we, um, it was just very important for, I don't know, it just, it was an amazing experience for our kids. May not be for everyone, but it worked for our family. And so, um, yeah, that's our story. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what did you do for schooling? Um, well, I actually did just about a little bit of everything. Um, our parents felt it was important for us to have some basic uh, American education. So beginning with kindergarten, I did a Becca homeschool for two years. Um, I did kindergarten and then first grade. And I then when I great English it, skills. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can read. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, then when I turned six, I went into Japanese um, public school, which the public schools here are great. And so because of that, I'm fluent in the language. And that, you know, is really important for missionary work. And so I'm very thankful my parents did that. Right. Um, we went back on deputation for two and a half years. It was a really long one. Um, and when we got back, I... Had just, I would have just gone into um, middle school here in Japan. Um, when I came back, I looked into joining uh, or going to uh, enrolling in a Japanese middle school, but they said, well, because you didn't graduate from a Japanese elementary school, you can't. But if you want, even though you're 13 years old, you can go back and do it over from the fourth grade. And I was like, no, that's okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, although I bet I would have killed in dodgeball but <laughs> uh, so then we did ACE homeschool for a couple years um, and then uh, that really it was kind of panning out it didn't work so well for me it worked great for my brothers but for me not so much um, I'm the kid who stares out the window a lot and so you know, it didn't work out so well. So um, it was really miraculous how the Lord opened the door. Um, but my brother and I were able to go to a international school. He went for one year and I went for three and it was an incredible experience. And so uh, one thing Sister Shrek has said that just really is so true is like God sees the problems before they're coming up, you know, and, and as she was talking about with giving birth, it's the same thing for my mom. She was here. She found out she was expecting my brother just before they moved to Japan. And so she was nervous about that. But every step of the way, God just, just puts everything in order where it needs to be. And when God sends you to a country, he doesn't just send you and you go alone. He really goes and prepares the way before you. He knows what you're going to face. And uh, it's amazing. Only God could do it. You know, only God could do it. Some people question whether there's a God. You know, I see in my life the evidence that it's impossible that there isn't a God, you know. So that's my experience. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Um, well, Mandy, sister, yeah. Can I just add to that? Um, there was a time. Um, now our daughter, when she went to boarding school, she went and never looked back. Like she was just loved it from day one to the end. Our son is a little bit more of a homebody. And so he did have times that he would struggle and um, we always told them, if you decide that's not for you, you can come home, no questions asked. Like, we're not forcing you to do this. But then he would always decide that he really did want to be there after all. But anyway, one day he was having a hard day. Um, I then, therefore, was having a hard day because, I mean, it's a three-hour flight from Madagascar. Like, he's literally, like, I'm literally on a different body of land than my children are. And so I was really struggling. And um, I was praying and God, um, and I'm going to cry because I can't talk about it without crying, but I, I, I'm not like, I don't hear God speak all the time. You know, some people are always like, God told me, God told me, whatever. I, I don't always get that. But that day God spoke to me 
And God said, I love your children more than you do. And it was like, if, like, I'm a mom and as moms, you know, we think we can do everything for our kids and we, re you know, we are kind of superheroes. We can do a lot, but mm -hmm. like God Amen. can do so much more. And if I, it was just like, God told me, trust me, I can take care of your kids. And I could sit here like, this is, we don't have enough time for me to tell you all the, all the times that like sister Shrek, I said, and Jason said, God just, he went before me. He went, he, he, he would just show up and it was just like, blow your mind. And this is like all of my life as an MK and in my own kids' lives, um, that God would just the right people at the right time. And even now my kids are adults in America, um, doing great, but God, like God prepared a church for my kids. My kids have they they've had they have never been alone on a holiday there's always been people there to love them and and like they've never had a christmas by themselves even though now you know we've been where we're here our kids are back in the states for holidays god is just time and time again just a couple weeks ago my kids were on a road trip together going to see my their grandparents 12 30 one o'clock in the middle of the night in America had an issue with tire and God sent a construction worker to fix their tire for them at 1230 in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee. I'm wow. telling you, like you can trust God with your kids. Don't ever doubt that. Whether you're the MK or you're the parent of the MK or you're the grandparent of the MK, I, whatever, just trust God. He can take care of way better than I can. And so that was just a lesson that I've learned a long time ago, and I preach it to everyone that has MKs or are MKs. So, right. yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Amen. And I think that's what this was really about tonight, um, especially for those of you who maybe have not stepped into the role of a parent of an MK, um, but you know that you will, that God's calling you to that. And so he's calling your children too. That is something that we say so often at MK Ministries that God hasn't just called you, but he's called your children too. And he's going to make a place for them in that ministry. And um, I think that that was too one of the reasons, I mean, you know, uh, the Richardsons that shows in their lives, the Shrek Heises that shows in their lives, their kids are serving the Lord and they're doing things for the Lord. Um and, and that is because their life experiences, God is doing that in their lives to prepare them for what he's calling them to do too. Um, and so, you know, I know we've got, I, I see a couple other people have mentioned, I see uh, Sister Gerke, her grandkids are the Fulmers and she's on here. There's a grandmother that is uh, wonder if I think if I'm correct that her grandkids are the Fulmers. Um, so we've got, like you said, a grandparent that's on here. Kylie Yates, she's going to Tanzania soon. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Jen Bob Jones. Jones. <laughs> Jen Bob Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Johnson was an MK, is an MK. Uh, Clemens, her maiden name. I'm looking through here, just kind of trying to see. But let me just say um, that there are ways, and we're going to be done here in just a minute. There are definitely ways that you can support MK Ministry. I need to pull up my list because I don't want to forget any of them. But, and I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but hey, I'm going to anyway. Um, <laughs> I know most of you are familiar with this. This is how MK Ministries is supported. It is a partner in missions, um, and we are a you can partner in missions with missionary kids uh, just like you would with a missionary um, so if you're interested in doing that um, i will i will give my email it's easy uh, and i'll put you can give me your emails but my email is mandy brown mkm at gmail.com mandy brown mkm at gmail.com so if that's something you're interested in or any of the other things we talk about that is one of the biggest ways because it does help supplement all those things that we've been talking about today um you know one of the things we have mk ministries uh sometimes has the opportunity to help uh, if a missionary kid might need counseling or support on the field that's one of those things so our monthly partners are extremely important uh, but there's also one time uh, sponsorship and this is monetary but we'll get to things that are not monetary but we have MK retreat and there are ways that you can help financially with missionary kids for MK retreat we have our NAYC trip we have MK Christmas um, 
which is a $25 sponsorship. And we have our college hyphen care packages, which have just now been going out and will continue to go out. And that's about a $50 care package that we send out. So these are all things, again, my email is Mandy Brown, MKM. Can you hear the train? Mandy Brown, MKM at gmail.com. Now, you can also go follow us on social media. We've been a little um, detached from that because we got locked out, but we're back in. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> anyway, so go follow us, um, MK Ministries on Facebook and also on Instagram. And then we also have um, prayer is the biggest bestest way that you can support us every single day um we have which pardon them because i used the right we care tonight on the back but we have our mk missionary map this is um this is it's got all our missionary kids on there now it does have our missionary kids that are 18 years and younger on there it also has my partners in crime if you can see it's got brother mark hadabaugh our coordinator <laughs> Got Sister Melinda Poitras, our secretary, Woo! and Brother Barrick Willoughby, our promotions Woo! director. All right. I know you all think I am so blessed to get to work with such wonderful people. You're right. You're right. Yeah, amen. Um, so that is uh, one help that we have, and these are available to everybody. If you're interested in that, um, then email me. And in a moment, like I said, I'll, I'm going to get some email addresses. Um, and then we also have these okay while i'm showing you this let me just tell you in a moment i'm going to do a little drawing that includes every single thing that i'm showing you right now so i'm going to have two packs of everything that i'm showing you right now so the other thing that we have is do i have an extra no i just don't have six fingers here we go <laughs> is our mk prayer puppets now what these are is little puppets it's really like kind of for sunday school ministry or or just if you're forgetful or you need prayer helps that's me i usually need a list it's very helpful um, and it comes with this card that tells you how to pray for each of the regions there of the different areas. So that's what that is. That's the little finger puppets, their card. So that would be included in, I'm going to do two giveaways of the whole packs. And that's one of the things included in the pack will be an MK Ministries hat. And a set of our stickers. All right. All right. <laughs> and our MK Ministries prayer ball because yeah, prayer is ball. Yeah. Anyway, right. <laughs> I know that was super <laughs> corny, right? <laughs> but all of, there's a little game on there and tells you how to play it to help uh, pray for missionary kids. So I want to uh, be able to give two of these packs away that include all those things. So what I need you to do, oh, you've got your prayer puppet. <laughs> I see, good, Kaylee. Anyway, what I need you to do is um, for the giveaways, I'm gonna give away two of them to the first two people, get your fingers ready, that type into the chat their email address. <laughs> Oh, oh, sister. Oh, my goodness. That was so fast. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. It's a depth. I mean, there was the, okay. So I've got Rachel Smoke and Wendy Gerke. I'm going to be emailing you for you to give me your information so I can mail you those. Okay. If you are interested in getting any of that stuff, please um, send me an email, mandybrownmkm at gmail.com. And if you're interested in any of the things that we talked about tonight, or you want to talk more about how you can help MK Ministries, please put your email address in our chat so that I can get in contact with you. Um.